Hello and welcome to this tutorial for Clip Studio Paint. In this video, I will show you tips and tricks you can use while working in black and white for comics, manga or illustration. It's for all levels, so I will show settings and keyboard shortcuts. Since the video will be long, I will provide uh, some timestamps in the description below for every section of the tutorial. I hope you find it helpful and without much further ado, let's start. File settings. First, let's create a new canvas. Here we can set up the resolution, the size, and the basic expression of color. In this case, we'll set up monochrome as our basic expression of color. This will set up all our new layers uh, uh, in monochrome by default. Since we are working in black and white, we can set up the resolution pretty high. In this case, 600 dpi. This is better for printing, especially the black lines. In this case, I simply create a blank canvas without borders. And as you can see, the default uh, color is monochrome for all new layers I create. If I later want to change the basic expression of color, we can go to Edit, Canvas Properties, and then here we can change it. We can also change it in the Layer Properties panel uh, for individual layers to color or gray. And use it uh, in every case as we need. But uh, every new layer we create is still monochrome, so that's really handy. Color expression. In this case, I will show the difference between the three expression of color. Here, as we can see, when we paint with color in the color layer, it paints with color in gray paints a shade of grey, but in monochrome it's all black. Also the edges of soft brushes uh, don't translate well in, in monochrome, so keep that in mind. This happens because in monochrome it's always 100% black or 100% white, we don't have any opacity. Anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing it's a technique to smooth image on the screen by applying a blurred edge and it helps while working in digital or seeing our works in, in different screens but when we print black and white we don't need, uh, we don't want actually anti-aliasing because uh, the grey around the lines can cause troubles while printing so we work without without anti-aliasing. You will note that when we have a monochrome layer selected, we don't have any anti-aliasing in any of the tools. But when we select a color or a, or a gray layer, we can change the amount of anti-alias in the, in the pen tool, for example. Here I will show a comparison side by side of the two. You note that the, the one without anti-alias is uh, jagged when we zoom and the other one has a grey edge around the, the line but uh, when we print it uh, will look ok actually the, the one without anti-alias we print better than the, the other one another benefit of working in monochrome with all anti-alias is uh, selections and fill. Uh, since we have 100% uh, black, it's really easy for the program to select uh, inside the lines or fill. But with anti-alias on, we have some problems uh, when we try to fill a shape, for example, as you can see here, it creates a halo around the, the line. We can set up uh, area scaling in, in the two properties of, of our bucket, but uh, it isn't the same. As you can see, when we, when we set up area scaling, it looks okay when we feel it. 
but if we lower the opacity of the of the lines you can see it goes past the lines but if we see the the lines in the, in the monochrome one it's a perfect selection perfect fill of the of the shape this works in in any in any complex selection Here I have some characters side by side, one without anti-alias and one with. Uh, as you can see, the resolution of my, my file is uh, 600 dpi. We can go even higher than that. Uh, when we work in monochrome, we don't have the color information, so the computer can handle higher resolutions without trouble. And it's uh, really helpful to get uh, smoother lines uh, while printing. As you can see, when I zoom out, you you will not uh, see any difference between the two. So don't worry about the jagged lines in the monochrome one. Okay, so sometimes we want uh, anti-aliasing. There are cases when we when we want to, for example, I use anti-aliasing for sketching because I like to use a soft brush. And if we use a soft brush in monochrome, as you can see, it's uh, really weird. So when I sketch, I use a, a gray or color layer and a soft brush like a pencil. This way I can sketch uh, with a softer brush, uh, an analog feel without worrying about the, the lines. And then when I ink, I use a monochrome layer and ink without anti-alias with a problem but this is just my my personal preference you can do whatever you feel I just prefer a, a softer feel when I when I sketch because I can be I can overlap uh, lines and, and be rougher with I like the rough edge and help me create the form I'm after. So I changed the expression of color in the in the layer properties of the sketch layer to gray and, and draw. Organization. When we work in black and white things can get confusing uh, really fast so it's a good idea to to have uh, the layers organized in different types. Here as you can see I have uh, layer groups for the different elements uh, one for the background one for the sketch for example one for the characters and one for details uh, dialogue balloon etc and we can create sub uh, layers sub layer folders inside the, the main folder for example here i have a, a layer folder for all the tones in the character folder and, and this way we can we can have a higher tree of layers and keep all, all well organized. This can be helpful to create selections, to turn off layers when we work in a specific part of our illustration, uh, to move layers. Uh, for example, we can move the background or move our dial dialogue balloons, etc. It also lets us uh, reuse elements such as characters uh, and background, for example, for, uh, between different pages of a comic or, or frames, and we don't need to, to draw it again. So to create a new layer folder, we select a, a layer, right-click it, and go to Create Folder and Insert Layer, or we can press Control G. Then we rename it and we can select a color for the folder to keep it even more organized. We can place it in the in the order in the stark order we we want. In this case, uh, the details folders go above the character and the background. 
רק בלעוד את ה-Dialog. We can also use frames to, to organize ourselves in, in our comic spaces. We can go to, to the frame tool and here as you can see in the tool property we can change the settings uh, for, the, for the brush size and, and the color. And then uh, we click and drag to create uh, our frame. As you can see, it creates a folder with a mask and a layer inside. This works similar as a layer folder, but uh, we have our background. To show you, I will move the, the layers inside the frame to show how it works. As you can see, we have a mask area uh, that shows what we can we can see of the frame and if we draw with any tool uh, inside the frame you you can't draw past that that mask area if you can see If we don't want the, the mask area showing, we can turn it off by clicking the icon in the layer panel. This way uh, we can see the whole page. But if we draw behind the frame, as you can see, uh, it will mask everything. If we show the mask area, we, we can work by by focusing on the content of the of the frame but we can see all the all the page this can be helpful while working in complex spaces in this example it's very simple but you can you can imagine how it will help you If we select the frame with the object tool, we have more options to control it. We can change the brush size in the tool, tool property. We can also change the, the frame itself, the size. Uh, and we have more options if we have another frames in the page. But in this case, it's very simple. We can change the, the path and extend it. So as you can see, everything we, we draw inside is only mask, but it's there. We could also use templates from, from the, the materials. We go to materials and manga materials, framing templates, and we have a lot of examples. We could also download from assets if we want, but it's a good starting point. We could also edit these this panels once we, we place it, so it's very versatile. Okay, so those are my tips on organization. You should explore all the, the settings uh, that suit you, you best, uh, create your own set of, of layers. Uh, layer folders and and keep uh, your work organized this works in every kind of illustration not only comics or manga so try to create good work practices actions to help us uh, keep track of, of which layer we are working we can use uh, a effect in the layers property panel that is a layer color this turns all black lines into one color and all white lines into another color. And this way we can work in black and white but uh, have a visual aid to which layer we are working to help us separate the, for example, the characters from the background, etc. We can create a set of actions to make this even quicker 
So I will show you how to create one. In this case, we select a new layer and we go to the auto action panel. If we don't have this uh, panel, we can go to windows and go to auto action to make it visible. And in the auto action panel, we are going to press the button to create a new action and name it, in this case, green lines. Then we press the record button to record the action. And then we turn on the layer color by pressing Ctrl B or uh, pressing the button in the layer perfect panel. We then select a new color to, to change it. And uh, we do the same for the sub color. Once we have the, the color selected, we stop the, the action and we can delete every change drawing color because we don't need it. Then it's done. We can use it to change the lines to our specific color. We select the layer or the layer group we want to change and press play. And as you can see, it changed the color of the lines to our previously selected color. And we could also uh, assign a, a keyboard shortcut to this action, so we can be even faster. To do it, we go to Edit, Shortcut Settings. And then in the Auto Action menu, we find our newly created action and assign a keyboard shortcut. In this case, I will put it with Ctrl F5. Then I press the keyboard shortcut and the, ac the action applies. So it's really handy. And we could also press Ctrl V to, to deactivate or activate the layer color. It retains the, the colors we selected. This makes it really fast to, to change it. And then we, we can see the, the results. white mask. When we work, we can't see the white, so the characters a lot of time are only black lines and it's a tra transparent background. So the background or other layers can, can creep behind it. We could mask the, the layers below, but if we move the above layers, it will cause troubles. So, there is a better way. We are going to create a white mask inside the, the character folder. We create a new layer and name it white mask. And we will use this, this layer to mask everything below it. To, to achieve this, we are going to paint with white by selecting white as our color and the bucket tool then we click inside the, the lines of the character we want to fill and if we turn the background on we can see that it creates a, a white mask but it didn't fill everything inside the character like the mouth or the cheeks for example in this case so, to better see the white, I will use the action we created previously. As you can see, it turned the, the color of the, of the white to a color. And then we could, for example, use the bucket tool again to, to fill the mouth and all the other elements. But I like to use another method I will show you. 
First, we are going to use the, the selection area tool by pressing M and we create a selection around the, the character. Then we fill it with white in this case. It appears as yellow and we deselect. Then we select a transparent color and the bucket tool. Make sure it, it doesn't have any area scaling and we click outside the, the lines of our character. And as you can see, it creates a perfect mask inside the lines of the character. I like this method because it doesn't matter how complex the, the drawing is, as long as the, the outside lines are clear and are connected, we can use this method no matter how complex the, the inside lines are. This separates our characters of our background. We could also put the, the color on the, on the character group to get the lines colored to further, further separate the, the characters. Or we could only use the color, the layer color in the lines, for example, and keep the mask white. But as you can see, it's really easy. We can now move the the characters around without any problem. Expressing grace. Since we can only work with black or white, we need to create grace by creating the illusion that there is tone. So there's a couple of methods. In this case, I will show you cross hatching or hatching. This method uh, works by creating a series of lines that uh, make uh, our brains think the, there is a tone. We can make it by a number of ways. I will show you a couple of experiments I, I do. Uh, first, I simply draw some lines and when we when we zoom out, you can see that it appears as a gradation of tone, but all the lines are black. Then we can also use uh, brushes to help us create these, these patterns uh, and achieve different results. Uh, here I will use some, some included with the program and some I downloaded from assets but please try try creating your own patterns or using different uh, brushes to get these brushes we can go to the hatching subsection on the on the pattern uh, decoration brush so i experiment with all the the different brushes and as you can see it creates different tones of gray but all these these lines are 100% are black. We could also use some stripping uh, with a spray tool, etc. Uh, so we just experiment. Another way is to fill the section we want uh, with black and then erase the, the tone with, with a brush to create a, a pattern. Here I will show you how I add some shadows in a couple of characters. Really easy with the brushes. First I create a selection using the white mask to, to stay in the lines. And then I, I experiment with different brushes to achieve the result I wanted. In the hair, for example, I, I first 
I fill it with black and then I, I erase to create different uh, tone gradations but feel free to experiment working with hatching uh, is really fun and with the help of uh, the brushes it's pretty easy too to achieve good results and uh, because it is a 100% uh, black if we decide to print it will translate uh, really well Another way of expressing shades of grey is by using screen tones. We can go to layer, new layer, tone to create a tone layer. The settings for the tone are frequency, density and type and angle. Uh, the frequency uh, means the, the number of lines, the size of the, the dots for example. The density is, the, is how dark the tone is and the type we can change uh, from the standard circle to uh, lines, uh, noise and uh, a lot of different uh, types we can change the angle of the tone too but we can always change the, the settings later in the layer property of the tone layer these patterns are 100% black so they only create the illusion of tone by repeating small dots or lines and we can also create noise that it has its own set of settings to achieve different results and also decoration If we create the tone layer without a selection, it will cover the whole canvas but it has a mask that we can invert or fill with, with transparent We can, as you can see, we can change all the settings we need in the layer property We can change the density, the frequency uh, and other settings To work with the tones we can use different drawing tools and fill tools. First I invert the selection and use the bucket tool to, to fill the, the area I want. Another way to create tones is uh, with the selection launcher. We can create a selection and if uh, we press create new tone we have the ability to create a, a pattern right there so uh, we can first select the area we want to apply a tone and then uh, just apply it other ways is with uh, the layer property we can turn any any color layer into tone so for example we paint with a shadow a shade of gray and we can and we can turn it into tone here in the density we can see that uh, it doesn't have a, a number it uses the or the color or the brightness of the of the layer if we turn uh, use color of image it will be opaque and if we turn uh, brightness it will be like we turn the the layer into the multiply blending mode Working with grayscale uh, could be confusing, so 
I prefer to work with with pure tone layers because it's I think it's the the more organized way to to work. Here I will experiment with different settings to show a couple of examples of different tones but please uh, experiment yourself with, with a number of settings to, to see what you can come up with. Here I will apply tone to, to some characters. We can use the, the selection to, to uh, fill and to create another tone to achieve a, a grayscale or, or different colors. It will be a good idea to, to keep uh, tones consistent uh, for example, the color of the hair of a character. Take note of what uh, number of tone, what settings you use to to keep it. Uh, for example, in a comic, to keep it between pages, uh, so you can achieve a consistent look. As you can he see here, I use the the different uh, brushes to scrub the the tone by painting with transparent same as we did with the cross hatching we can use the the same brushes to achieve a, a gradation of tone it's a, a really good uh, way to to achieve uh, light uh, the appearance of light in in a drawing uh, so experiment yourself with it Sometimes when we fill with tone, it can be hard to see if all the, the area is filled. So we can use a, a setting in the view panel. We go to view, show tone area and show tone area. Then a, a color a color fill a, give us a visual aid to see what areas are filled and what areas aren't. This way we make sure we have all the area we want selected. We could also change the color of the, the show tone area similar as we did with the layer color in the properties panel.
uh, Clip Studio comes with a lot of uh, presets, monochrome patterns we can use and we can also download from assets. I will show you how to replace a tone. First I apply a, a simply a gradation tone in the from the presets and then I mask it to the area I want. We can modify these kind of tones by moving the, the blue handles they come with to change the angle and the size of these gradations. Or we can change the settings in the tool property panel or the layer property panel. If we want, we can use another another preset and replace the, the one we have by simply dragging from the material into the, the other tone. This is a, a really quick way to, to try different tones with the same mask. And then we, we can change the, the settings of those tones. We can also use uh, monochrome patterns to quickly create backgrounds or textures in, in our comics. Sometimes when we work with tone, there is a, a strange uh, effect that, that occurs called the Moiré effect. This happens when two tones of different frequencies, for example, or angles overlap and it can uh, look very bad when uh, printed because uh, it's a confusing pattern and it can be braid, etc. So uh, we want to avoid it if possible. Uh, to, to make sure you don't have a uh, moiré, you can uh, make sure the, the different tones uh, you overlay are of the same frequency and of the same angle. Uh, this way uh, you can overlay without creating moiré, especially the, the angle. It's very easy to cause moire. When we work uh, digitally, it's hard for the screen to represent uh, tones. So sometimes, even if the settings are correct, it, it may look like you have a moire, but but if you print it, uh, it will look good. So so first, uh, make a a test print of any overlay tones you are going to use if you want to make sure uh, the settings are correct. I will show you how to overlay tones to achieve uh, shadows. 
Sometimes we want to overlay the same tone to, to get a, a shadow and we, we look it, uh, zoom out and it seems like the tone uh, is darker but when we zoom in uh, the dots are perfectly aligned so, so it disappears. Uh, this, this can happen in the, in the printing too. So, to avoid it, we can move the tone by going to the Move tool and move a uh, tone pattern. Then we move it, so, so we, we change uh, the alignment of the tone. <laughs> to make it easy to see, I, I turn the, the color of the layer on. And when we overlay the tone in this way, it won't uh, disappear when printed and it will give us the result we want so uh, we can do it with uh, different uh, frequencies and densities so experiment this can also help to to avoid moire by moving the tone a cool trick to to get gradation is overlaying the same tone and then with a tone scrapping tool like uh, the airbrush, we can uh, erase the, the top tone to get uh, a gradated effect. This can be very helpful to, to achieve a, a volume in our characters and to get uh, a smooth uh, transition. By changing the density, we change the, the darkness of the tone. For, for example, it could be the skin tone and the and the shadow so experiment uh, doing doing that you can also use uh, other types of, of uh, brushes like cross hatching for tone for example to achieve a different a different uh, result so as a rule is simply to follow that you maintain the same frequency and angle and then we change the the density if we want but we can also overlay same same density by moving the the dots Filters. We can use filters to quickly turn images into monochrome illustrations. First I will show you the LT conversion of layer. We can make it by right clicking in the layer and going to LT conversion. Here we can select the preview button to see the result in real time. This can take a while depending on the power of your computer. And then we have a lot of settings to experiment, like the posterization, uh, tone work, we can change the threshold of the lines, but it depends on, on, every, on every photo, so, so uh, we experiment until we achieve the result we want, and then when we, when we press OK, the, the filter will will create a, a layer with um, a folder with different uh, layers we can further uh, edit.
Once we have these layers, we can draw in it. Uh, we can use the mask included to, to change it. So we achieve a, a, the result we want. And we can also draw on top. It's just uh, layers, tone layers and, and uh, ink layer. Another filter we can use is uh, binarization. We can go to edit, tonal correction, binarization to, to achieve it. Uh, it's a quick way to turn an image into black and white and it can give us good textures, for example. Contrast and background. We need to keep uh, contrast in mind when we work in black and white, uh, since we can easily have a, a lot of contrast or too low contrast, like in the right. Uh, ideally, I, I will want to to keep a balance between the two, but it depends of the in the art style. So, uh, but keep in mind that if you use too much uh, tone the pages can turn flat uh, really easily. I will show you a couple of tips to separate the, the characters from the background when we have too many information. The uh, first tip is to create a white border. To achieve this, we can simply uh, control click our, our white mask in the character to create a selection. Then uh, we create another layer and ex uh, we click expand the, the selection in the selection launcher. Then we fill it with white. And this will separate the character from the background. The second tip is to create a tone layer above the whole background to make it darker and achieve more contrast between the, the background and the character. And for the last tip, we simply draw with white behind the character using the sp uh, spray tool or, or hatching to further separate the, the white border from, from the background. We can use the, the action we made previously to, to see where are we painting.
export settings. To export our drawing, we go to export, single layer, uh, in this case, uh, shape edge, but uh, you can use any format you want. And we make sure a uh, tone layer is activated and uh, that we don't uh, scale the, the drawing because it can mess up the, the tones in the, in the page. As you can see, it gives the, the half dot tones and, and the hatching as is. If we want to export to screens, it's better we export in grayscale. So first, if we have any tones with uh, decoration we want to keep, we need to rasterize it and then uh, we can export uh, for screen. We change the color to gray and we disable tone layer. This way every tone will turn into, into a grayscale tone. But keep in mind uh, some artifacts uh, may occur. Uh, so so see if the result works for you or change uh, manually the, the tones. Okay, that's all I have for today. If you have any question, feel free to leave a comment. Thank you very much for watching. Bye bye.